Good evening and welcome to WEAR News. I'm Amber Britton Dyer. Coming up on the show today, we will be discussing whether the relationships survive throughout university. You can let us know your experiences on Twitter at WEAR News using the hashtag WNRelationships. Also on the show, we will be looking at the acts that could be coming to Sunderland's new music venue. We'll be giving you your weekend's weather update, but first, let's get your latest news with Harry Booth. Good evening. More than 150 people who drink too much alcohol have died in Sunderland in the past 12 months. There were over 83,000 alcohol-related hospital admissions in the city, compared to the regional average of around 51,000. Officials have said that alcohol manufacturers and retailers should have to pay for the damage it causes. Today was the last day of the work to rule action by health workers in the northeast. Members were on picket lines at the beginning of the week and since Tuesday have been in work while still taking part in the efforts. Staff were refusing overtime and taking full breaks as part of the work to rule industrial action against pay disputes. Sunderland Illuminations are in Roker Park but only for another two weeks. The park has been designed by Sunderland Live to look like a scene from Alice in Wonderland. There are many children's activities throughout the park to add to the magic throughout half term, including a troll to find. Voiced by, uh, one of them's voiced by the lovely Terry Deary. So for those horrible history fans, they can come down and, and, and hear that. Sunderland offer should be Sunderland's offer and not copying somebody else's. And finally, Sunderland are back in Premier League action after the international break tomorrow when they play Southampton. They'll be looking for back-to-back -back victories after beating Stoke at the Stadium of Light last time out. The Black Cats have a good recent record against the Saints, having not lost against them since 2003. That's the latest. Back to you, Amber. The Point will be having a makeover to become Sunderland's biggest and best new music venue. Owner Lorraine Griffiths wants it to rival the O2 Academy in Newcastle. Not only will the venue cater to music acts, but The Point will also host comedy nights and private parties. Reporter Ellie Young spoke to Busker McArnold about his hopes for the new music venue. And uh, fingers crossed, I really hope it's successful for them because it's exactly what Sunderland needs. Would you like to play there? What would you feel about doing I'm going to play there. I'm definitely, it's my life's mission to go and play there with my band, The Kets. You've been sending your tweets in all evening, so at Jam Jamboy67 wants to see Tom Jones come to Sunderland. At Charbert X wants more local acts like Frankie and the Heartstrings to play. Who would you like to see play there, Harry? I'd like to see One Direction come back. I know they only played recently, didn't they, at the Stadium of Light? Yeah. Tens of thousands of people all over Sunderland from not even the country, but all over the world. It was a sensational thing to just see and be a part of. And if they came back for this new music venue, it'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh, what about you? Who would you like to see come? I'd like to see Michael Bublé play there because they always go to Metro Radio, so it'd be nice to go somewhere new and mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the comedy acts, Michael McIntyre would be good there as well. Yeah, because it it's not just a music venue, is it? Yeah. There's so many things that go there, as you say, yeah. comedy acts. Yeah. Um, I think a local lab would be fantastic, yeah. someone like Chris Ramsey maybe. Definitely. A, a local pool for, for everyone here, and yeah. I think he's a very popular around here, isn't he? So that'd be fantastic. Yeah. And there's so many other things like, you know, uh, other do's there, like Christmas parties, wedding engagements, that sort yeah. of thing. Go for our Christmas dinner this year, Harry? Yeah, well, you, if I'm away having Christmas dinner with you now, Amber. Yes, you tell you us that what you're telling yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, cool. Oh, that's a deal then, we'll have to do that. <laughs> You've also been giving us your views on relationships at university. Can they last? A recent survey early this week showed that only 30% of relationships survive until graduation. With us now is Reese and Meg, who have very different views on university relationships. Good evening, guys. Thank Good you for evening. coming on. Hello. So, Reese, you are four. Yes, I've been with my girlfriend since college, and I'm in my last year of university now, still going strong. Yeah, are you happy? Has university affected anything at all during the... Uh, so, you're in third year now. Has it yeah. affected anything? Um, it's, but it, you know, it's been difficult at times, obviously. We're on different timetables for uh, our courses and different timetables for work. But we do go to the same university, so we have managed to uh, schedule in you know, meetings, dates every now and then. We do go out and get wild still. We still live the student lifestyle, but just <laughs> together. Yeah, is it, is, did you uh, feel that coming into university that you, know, you, you could probably must have heard stories that you know, university could be a problem for relationships, but you always felt that you would remain strong and you, you would last through university? Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously we were a little afraid. It's a whole new world. Yeah. It's like an entirely different like, reality to college. You know, you're living by yourself, you're away from your parents. But um, it, we've managed to work. We have had arguments every now and then, but it's just helped us grow and become stronger. Do you feel that in third year that you're stronger as you ever, you've ever been, really? Um, it's good. Well, yeah. Yeah, OK. We are stronger. We're, we do have a larger workload now, though, uh, being, it, as you said, it is third year. But um, 
with good scheduling, we manage to keep seeing each other all the time. And obviously we saw that uh, it's a, been a problem, you know, a small percentage of people, about 30%, mm. it, it, there's a problem. Are you surprised by that or do you? I'm, I'm not surprised at all, yeah. really. Like, it's not for everybody. It is a lot of hard work. You've got to keep working on it. You've got to really want to be in that relationship to keep it going. Um, I'm not surprised by these the statistics at all. And Meg, your gains, what do you think of the 30% statistic? I, I'm not surprised by it at all, actually, either. And I think it's lovely. I'm really happy mm -hmm. for you that your Thank relationship you. has lasted. But um, I don't know. I just kind of feel that you're a completely different person coming to uni, especially, I mean, you got together at the start of college, school, did yeah. you? And compared to, you know, your last year of uni, that's a good amount of years difference. And I feel like when you go to uni, you really do mature. You grow up. You kind of get to know who you are. And I think you change. And I don't know. That's why, for me personally, I don't think relationship at uni is kind of the right thing for me. Yeah, um, obviously, um, as, have you had a relationship at university, say, like before? Is, is it kind of going into university and going into a relationship, do you think, oh, this, this may not work because of the strange university puts on you? No, I, I had uh, a relationship starting at the beginning of, the end of first year, yep. and I finished it at the end of second year. And it wasn't because anything went wrong. I mean, I was very happy, but I just didn't want to be in a relationship anymore. Yeah. Sorry. And sorry, Harry. And Reese, do you think it would have been different if you'd been at different universities, like long distance? Yeah, definitely. Um, we thought about that before, obviously moving to university. Um, that's why. That's one of the reasons why we decided to call it the same university as well as obviously the uh, facilities. But if we had gone to different universities, um, then we would have had to incorporate travel time, travel cost. It would have put a lot more strain in the relationship. I feel like we may have become part of that statistic if we had went to different universities. And Meg, you said you split up uh, with your boyfriend in second year, obviously going into third year now. Is it a case of you know, moving relationship to one side and concentrating on uni? And you say you, you, you kind of preferred being with your friends as well. Are they kind of obviously a big part in your life at uni? Yeah, I mean, um, when you get to third year, the workload really steps up. So obviously that takes up a lot of time. But also I kind of think, you know, guys can come at any time, but these girls that, my, that I live with at the moment, they're my best mates, and I might not ever have the opportunity to live with them again, because who knows what's going to happen after I graduate. So I just think make the most of that, have time with your friends, and kind of, you know, we're at uni, we all want to have a bit of fun, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> plenty of time for relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah and Reese, you say, um, obviously, you remain so strong now, but can you yeah. see, you know... Oh, I can totally see where you're coming from, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've got a few friends that are exactly like that. They've had relationships, hasn't necessarily worked, you know, they've, they've broken up, and they're still having fun, we're still good friends. Um, we've, uh, me and my girlfriend just managed to work at it. Mm. We can't imagine being without each other, so we're just really determined to work at it. I guess it's totally individual, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, you, you, I was going to say about that individual basis, different for different yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, everyone has different opinions on it. And I think it makes a real difference as um, if, you, if you're coming from uni from a different place, if you've moved away from uni, because you're here with this you know, whole new life, and that makes a difference. Okay, yeah, we do have to wrap it up now, guys. Thank you very much. Over to Twitter, Amber. Let's see what's happening on Twitter. At Davy Ladd says that Meg is right and relationships never last. There's never a good balance. But at Zozo5 says that if you work hard enough, a relationship can go the distance. Thanks for coming into the studio, Thank guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Keep your views coming in while we check on the weekend's forecast with Reese. Hello everyone and good evening. A big thank you for all of your pictures sent in this morning on Twitter. Fortunately, it looks like the weather is going to stay the same over the weekend. For the rest of today, we will have a few passing clouds with highs of 10 degrees. Overnight tonight, we will see it become much cooler with some scattered clouds rising north. Moving on to Saturday, that cool air will continue to fall through to the early hours of the morning, dropping to lows of 3 degrees. For the rest of the day today, we will again see some clouds here and there with highs of 15 degrees. So a much warmer day than yesterday with cool, dry conditions for the evening. Again on Sunday we have similar temperatures but we'll get to see some more lovely sunshine with a few clouds towards the afternoon. And that's your forecast. Back to you guys. Thanks Reese. The weather doesn't look too great does it Harry? What have you got planned for no, the weekend? No it's really disappointing for me actually because I was planning to go skydiving this really? weekend. Really? Yeah it's been planned in the works for absolutely ages. It's a huge long, short list to go through and obviously the weather is so important for something like that because it's obviously got to be safe going up these huge tens of thousands of feet and if the weather, if the cloud position is not right, if there's black clouds, if there's rain, then we can't go up, unfortunately. So it's, it was something I was really looking forward to. But um, yeah, oh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But um, I think we have to end the show now, Amber. Yeah, that's all from We Are News. We hope you enjoy your weekend. Join us again on Monday when we will be discussing top tips on how to lose weight and the best way to care for your parrot. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>